Hey everybody, welcome back. Russ Barkley here. Welcome to my channel again. I want to say how much I appreciate you viewing my lectures and subscribing to this channel. In this particular post, I want to address an issue that I continue to get a lot of questions about, and that is whether or not exercise or physical activity might be of benefit to people with ADHD. Uh, so let's go into this literature and see if we can't answer this question. After all, this is something I've been recommending in my talks for a few years now, uh, but it doesn't hurt to go back over the evidence yet again, just to be sure that this is something that might be useful. So uh, let's take a look here. Uh, starting back in 2015, there was a uh, systematic review of the few studies that had been done by then, so that's about eight years ago, and this was published in the Journal of Attention Disorders. And what it found is that uh, although they identified seven studies of acute exercise and 14 studies of long-term effects, when they put them all together into a meta-analysis, uh, they found that uh, there were large differences across the studies in their designs and their results. And so it was believed that we couldn't say much about exercise back then, but it appeared promising. There were trends across these studies in seeing improvements from physical exercise uh, on ADHD symptoms uh, and on executive functioning. Uh, so eight years ago, we weren't sure. Okay, next up. We now have a paper that was pub published a year later. This is a meta-analysis also, uh, and it has gone through and looked at the literature. Uh, it identified 10 publications that met its criteria, uh, and they were looking at randomized assignments with control groups of the effect of physical exercise on motor skills and executive functioning in ADHD kids. This review concludes that there was a significant effect of exercise on ADHD functional outcomes. The longer the exercise duration uh, and the more consistent it was practiced, the larger the effect sizes were. An effect size is the degree of improvement as measured in standard deviations. Uh, so they did find that effect sizes were not related so much to exercise intensity or to the mean age of the participants or to gender, those, those are good things. We don't wanna see an awful lot of variability there, um, but it was of modest benefit on functional outcomes. So 2016, things are looking good. Let's move on. Here's another review published in 2015, or excuse me, 2016. This is over in the Journal of Neural Transmission, of all places to publish such a review. Uh, this review, a meta-analysis as well, uh, separates the exercise into cardio and non-cardio exercises. Uh, and what it found was that cardio exercise seemed to produce acute beneficial effects on executive functioning, particularly impulsivity, on reaction time, and on some other physical measures that they looked at in this review. Beneficial chronic effects of cardio were also found on various functional outcomes, including executive functioning, attention, and behavior. They did find that acute and chronic effects of non-cardio exercise were questionable, but did seem to have some predominantly positive effects. So cardio seems to be better than non-cardio, that both seem to be of some help, uh, and acute and chronic both seem to be of benefit, but chronic cardio seems to be a little better in producing a, a greater degree of effect in cognitive, behavioral, and social functioning. Okay, so that's 2016. Next up is in 2017. There's a review of all of the literature, including the new studies that have been published in the interim. This is a review of 30 studies now with regard to children and teens. Mind you, so far, all the reviews are on children and teens. The study finds that both short-term and long-term studies support the clinical benefits of physical activity for individuals with ADHD. Cognitive, behavioral, and physical symptoms of ADHD appeared to be alleviated. Bit of a strong word there. I would have said improved. 
uh, in most instances, uh, and the largest intervention effects were reported for mixed exercise programs rather than the same exercise being done repeatedly. So here's another review suggesting some benefits for kids and teens with ADHD from adding routine physical exercise of moderate to intense aerobic or cardio activity. Okay, now we move on. Another two years, it's 2019. We've got more research being done in the interim. This paper identifies 14 studies that included 574 children and teens, uh, and they rolled it all together into their meta-analysis. They found that about 276 participants were assigned to physical activity. The other 298 were in some kind of control group. The review concludes that there were benefits in the research on anxiety, on depression, from physical activity. They also found some modest improvements in hyperactive and impulsive symptoms and inattention symptoms, but these were not statistically significant in their meta-analysis. Uh, they did find, however, improvement in ratings of thought problems, social problems, and aggressive behavior in these participants. So overall, concluding that physical exercise does seem to be beneficial to kids with ADHD. I'm surprised that they didn't see much in the way of inattention or hyperactive symptoms, but it likely has to do with the measures that were being used in these particular studies that were reviewed here. Let's keep going. We got a lot more to cover, a lot out there. All right, so now we're up to 2022. Another three years has transpired. We've got much more research again to review. This literature research uh, reveals 14, excuse me, 15 randomized controlled trials that met their criteria for inclusion. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot more research out there, but some researchers don't want to include studies of very weak or poor scientific design, instead focusing on the best of the trials, which is sort of what this review wanted to do. And this meta-analysis showed that physical exercise did improve attention in ADHD children, did improve executive functioning, and motor skills in these children. Once again, this review didn't seem to find much benefit on ratings of hyperactivity, nor did it seem to find effects on depression or social problems, uh, but it did find effects on executive functioning. Okay, more reviews to come. Now we're looking at another review that was done at about the same time, looking at physical interventions for ADHD children and teens. Uh, and this review uh, found that there were beneficial effects of physical activity, again, on executive functioning, uh, as measured by rating scales, and also found that the cognitive demand of the physical activity did appear to differ in its impact. The less cognitive demand, that is the more repetitive, the less the individual had to think during exercise, the better it appeared to be. It found that there were benefits of physical activity even in individuals taking methylphenidate, a stimulant medication, though the degree of improvement was modest in those children, makes sense. Medication is going to produce a big improvement. There's not much left for physical activity to do, but it was found to be of benefit even in the kids taking medication. All right, let's move on up now. This is going to be in 2022. Yet another systematic review and meta-analysis. This one pretty much reaching the same conclusions as the other ones. Physical activity, particular cardio aerobic activity, particularly that's done frequently, uh, is of benefit to children and teens in their ADHD symptoms and especially measures of executive functioning. Uh, they found that 20-minute uh, sessions of physical activity, sport, or exercise led to improvements, but that the more frequent the activity uh, the better things were in the improvements. Okay, now we're up to this year. This is going to be 2023. Here is yet one more meta-analysis of all the research that's out there. Now we've got 22 randomized trials in this particular review, and the authors find that the um, chronic exercise interventions that are done routinely and chronically had 
beneficial, small but beneficial effects on the overall symptom ratings of ADHD. Specifically, they found effects on inattention uh, as well uh, as the overall ratings of ADHD. Uh, they did find that the closed skill exercise, that is where you're repeating the same activity over and over again chronically, uh, is that that was better than what they called open skill exercise, which is doing a variety of different things. So they did find overall beneficial effects on ADHD, particularly on inattention. They also found improvements in executive functioning in populations that received exercise versus those that were in the control group. Interestingly, they did not find that there was much of any difference between children or teens, both benefited, whether the exercise was less than 50 minutes or more than 50 minutes per session, that didn't seem to matter too much. And also the number of sessions of exercise. Studies that had 24 or less seemed to do just as well as studies with 24 sessions or more. Uh, so that's all good. Exercise does seem to be helping here. So there you have it. Up through 2023, lots of research which seems to show certainly beneficial effects on measures of executive functioning, both ratings and cognitive tests of executive functioning, especially impulsivity, uh, but also inattention. We also have some modest benefits on ADHD symptoms, particularly on inattention. There's also improvement in motor skills as measured in some of these studies. Uh, a bit of an inconsistent effect on whether it helps with anxiety and depression, some earlier studies finding it, some later reviews not finding that to be the case. Not much benefit on social functioning across most of these studies, uh, but that's okay. Nobody thought exercise was gonna help you socially. Uh, and it looks like aerobic is better than non-aerobic activity. And the more consistent, the more chronically it's done, the better the benefits seem to be. Now, mind you, this is all with kids and teens. There's hardly been any research on adults. I did find a couple of papers, no reviews. Uh, there was one article that was published, let's see, in uh, this year, 2023, looking at the effects of exercise on the mental health, cognitive functioning, and ADHD symptoms. Uh, or excuse me, that's not the right one. Here it is. Um, this is a, the effects of uh, aerobic exercise on executive functioning in adults with ADHD. Sorry for the confusion, a lot of research up here on my screen. Uh, this was a single study, uh, and it looked at acute exercise between 23 adult patients with ADHD and 23 matched controls. And it is simply looking at cognitive testing within the lab. It's also looking at brain activation. It found that exercise improved reaction times uh, in individuals with ADHD, but not in healthy controls. So it looks like the more deficient you are in your attention and reaction time, and that's ADHD, the more likely you are to benefit. The more typical you are in those areas of cognitive functioning, you're probably not gonna see much further benefit from physical exercise. And doesn't that make sense? I mean, how, how far can you go? You're already at the norm. It's what we call a ceiling effect. So adding in exercise might not be as beneficial to typical people, but it does appear to be beneficial to ADHD adults. There was one more paper here that I found using adults with ADHD. This was published last year. It's also looking at just acute exercise, sort of like one session of intense exercise on the ADHD group versus non-ADHD groups, and also looking at those who uh, got the high intensity exercise and those who didn't get high intensity exercise. So four different conditions being compared here. They say, we found that the improvement in ADHD and depressive symptomatology, as well as in processing speed, and in reaction time response variability, followed the high intensity intervention program. And it was significantly greater for the ADHD group than the comparison group. So once again, exercise seems to be preferentially beneficial for ADHD, not as beneficial for those without ADHD. And by the way, this was done with 
college students. So they're arguing that uh, high intensity exercise may be a benefit to these young adults uh, as an adjunct to their pharmacological intervention. So awful lot that's going on out there. To summarize, it looks like yes, physical exercise is helpful for kids and teens with ADHD. We have evidence going all the way back to 2015 and that it benefits them in a variety of ways, particularly executive functioning, inattention, motor skills, uh, and to a lesser extent, some other aspects of ADHD, but not a much benefit for comorbid depression, anxiety, maybe, maybe not, uh, and certainly not of much benefit in social functioning. But the evidence for adult ADHD is still open to challenge. Only a couple of studies, mainly looking at acute exercise, and their finding in both studies there were benefits to the adults with ADHD of an acute exercise trial versus no exercise, but not of benefit to the typical individuals who aren't ADHD. So that's my summation of the literature. Looks like we do have uh, evidence for benefits with kids and teens. The jury is out on the benefits for adults, but the few studies are looking very promising there as well. Thanks for joining me for this video. Hope to see you again on another video of mine. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Recommend my channel to others too, if you like. And do have a look at my books over on my website if you think they might be of help to you. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Be well.